Welcome in to the live desk. I am Janae Hancock. Today we are talking about Kansas City Dream and I know you all saw that video that was just there on your screen. A lot to look forward to and we'll have the full story a little bit later on KCTV 5 News. But before we get to our newscast this evening, I do want to touch on our guest for today. You're taking a look at Diallo Giovanni French. He produced and directed Kansas City Dream and Diallo, how's it going? Doing okay. How you doing, Janae? I am doing well. So I know we spoke, what, a week ago about this documentary, but of course yeah. we do have to tease it for our viewers here on social media. And if you can just tell us what is Kansas City Dreamin' and how did it come about? So it is a music documentary about the African-American music history of the city. And uh, so we talk about you know, obviously people like Charlie Parker and, and Count Basie and Lester Young and Mary Lou Williams. And then we also bring into the present with Janelle Monet and Tech Nine and Low Key and Bloodstone, and Bobby Watson and Lonnie McFadden and Olita Adams. Um, so it's, it's sort of an overall music documentary about the African American music history of the city. Uh, how it came about is uh, I'm a music photographer. Uh, so I've been photographing musicians for uh, almost 20 years now, and I've sort of developed a lot of black and white photos of a lot of our uh, local jazz and musicians and so forth. And so the root of it was like, OK, what can I do with all these photographs I've accumulated over the years? And that was kind of the, the nucleus of of this film. And, you know, you mentioned the fact that you have some heavy hitters that are weighing in. I also want to touch on who you have interviews with. You sat down with, like you mentioned, Tech Nine, Melissa Etheridge, Mayor Quentin Lucas, and the list goes on and on. And like I asked you last week, but just so our viewers kind of get a better uh, perspective on this, why did you ask those people specifically to add their voices into this documentary? Why did you feel like they were just the missing piece? Well, because I wanted to uh, spotlight musicians uh, that a man audience who are known all over the world who aren't just known locally. Uh, Bobby Watson is well revered in the jazz community all over the world. He travels, still travels all over the world uh, doing different performances. She still travels all over the world performing. And community. A lot of people don't realize that they actually still live here in the, Kansas, the greater Kansas City area. Tech Nine obviously is known all over the world. I think he's on tour right now, actually. Um, Janelle Monet goes without saying. Um, so I actually knew everyone in, in the film, uh, with the exception of Melissa Etheridge. I already had a relationship with, with Olita and Bobby, and I went to high school with Tech Nine. So it was kind of easy. And, and these are folks that I've photographed over the years as well. So I also chose people that I had already had a nice little archive of photographs of that I could use in the film to help tell the story. So so that's kind of why I chose those folks. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm still trying to get Janelle in the film yeah. in the final hour. I'm still hopeful. Uh, but but even even if she's not able to be a part, part of the film, we still talk about her in the film. Yeah. So, because uh, she's the biggest thing musically to come out of Kansas City probably since Charlie Parker. So, yeah. you know. And I was going to touch on that. It's just interesting to see, to watch the documentary. I mean, like you mentioned, for people who live here, but also for people who are not from here, like myself, and just to see all of the people, the talent that came out of Kansas City. And you mentioned your goal. One of the goals is to have Janelle Monet actually a part of the film and to add her voice in. But also another goal you have is to raise money to get this goal or to get this film out to the public, not just here locally, but the world in general and have it on streaming platforms. Speak a little bit more about that. Yeah, so, uh, you know, with, with any film, anytime you use pre-recorded music, you have to pay for it. <laughs> and since this is a music documentary, we use a lot of pre-recorded music to help tell the story. Um, and so, the goal is this, the goal for this film was never for this to be uh, just a local film. It was always something that I wanted to put out to the entire world. Um, and in order for that to happen, we have to make sure all the music is, is is licensed and paid for. And it's a very expensive nightmare to be quite honest with you. Uh, and so, so that's where we're at now. You know, we actually have a fundraiser uh, coming up uh, November 9th. Uh, and we'll be at, at the, I, I believe I'm pronouncing this right, the Pharaoh Cinema 4, which is an in independence at 7 o'clock p.m. It's $25. There'll be a silent auction. 
Uh, I'm hoping to have some of the cast members from the film present that you can also meet. Um, and also, you can just go to GoFundMe. Uh, you know, Kansas City. If you go to GoFundMe, just type in Kansas City Dreaming and the Dreaming without the G, <laughs> like California Dreaming, and it'll pop right up. And, and you can make donations. You know, no amount is too small. Uh, we're trying to raise a lot of money. And my hope is that sometime in 2024, uh, Folks will be able to pull up their Roku stick or whatever and 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 view it, have it streaming somewhere. That's that's the goal. Yeah. So the goal going into the new year, and um, like you mentioned, you can find all of that information on ways to donate. You can find that right now on our website, kctv5.com. But before you head there, we definitely want to make sure you tune in to our newscast this evening at 6 p.m. for the full story with Diallo Giovanni French and more about Kansas City Dreamin', and we'll tease it at 3:30 as well. Diallo, I want to thank you so much for joining me here at the live desk. And again, congratulations on your success with this documentary. And I think it's important that people get out and learn about. Kansas City's music history, um, people who live here, and then again, people who are not from here because it's all very fascinating. So thank you again. Well, th and thank you, Janae, for, for doing the story. I appreciate mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Of course. All righty. We're going to take one last look at that video we have of the documentary, just kind of giving you a little snippet um, as we look ahead to our evening newscast coming up in just a few hours.